I'm Celeste Brown. I'm 12 years old, I mean 11 years old. My birthday is October 18th. Well, I was born in Bangor, and I'm from Tobik. And my parents are Rebecca Ireland and Dustin Sapir. And I have three siblings, Griffin Fox Sapir, Awar Brown, and Sky Brown. something that's split, made sharp, maybe in the middle, and then you got two things out here. So you can sort of pin them, examine like that, so you have a birch bark. So my name is Jamie Gorman. I'm a resource development consultation coordinator for Tobik First Nation. My job flows out of the duty to consult, so anytime there's the Crown is considering conduct that could potentially impact rights, we work to ideally prevent the impact to rights, but sometimes we moderate or mitigate and modify. So we do a lot of historical research on what our traditional use was on the land. Like I say, the community had been shut down in March. So for all the students and everybody, they were, you know, in their homes. There was, nobody sort of knew what was going on. The social distancing and social isolation was taking a toll. We're social beings, and it's important for us to get together and to share story. It's been a critical part of our whole human story. So I believe sort of the pandemic opened up a window where we were able to say, hey, we can take people out on the land, share our story, it's a sort of land-based education type of tool and it, it's actually changed a bit on how we're going to be doing work going forward. Like we now will realize that going out on the land is probably more COVID friendly as long as you're following all the appropriate guidelines. Once you get them out there, you've got that space and that fresh air. Well, when it first started and there was like the lockdown or whatever, and my mom and my dad and my sisters were always home, it was weird, but it wasn't really weird when we were having supper together because we always had supper together. And on the weekends, it wasn't really weird, but like in the weekdays, it was weird because you would wake up and all you could see was your sisters and your brothers running around. And it was really chaotic and crazy, just being stuck with your family for a really long time. That's probably what a whole bunch of people want. Like, I just want to be stuck with my family. But if you could be stuck with them like a whole lot, it's not that fun, not at all. Especially if you have older sisters and younger brothers. There's one way up there. Yeah, they're way up there. Can I taste it? No, it's probably too cold. It's the yellow birch. Can you taste it? Kind of, it hurts my stomach. Oh, yeah. I hear blue jays. <laughs> I hear griffin. And, and the griffin. I think COVID will still probably be a little thing, but it's not gonna be like crazy like this. Like if it does end up being like real crazy, um, I'm gonna be scared for that, but Right now, you don't really have anything to worry about, what you kind of do. What you should worry about is being safe from it and like staying away from people that have it and staying away from people that might have it and just being aware of what you're doing 
being aware of where you're going, stuff like that. But it's basically the only thing that you need to worry about. Well, inside I feel more clustered. I feel, I don't know, I just feel like the air is not good in there. But then when I go outside, it's really nice when you just sit there and listen to the nature. Listen to the birds, listen to the trees. We did the trip to Mount Carlton. It was fun, but also very tiring when you were walking up because your legs will just, it feels like your legs will just collapse anytime. Dory and I, being the elders of the group, went to the back. Some kids stayed with us and we found some medicines on the way up and we showed kids how to identify a golden thread, Coptis trifolia. When we were climbing up the rocks, we found some tea that our ancestors would pick. So I picked some and I brought it to my mom. And she actually, she jars it the other day, actually. We saw lots of other plants that she described and it was really cool. The golden thread stuff. And she told me about that and how it was like, it means like that the dirt is like rich and good and stuff like that. And there's not really a lot of it. And then the tea that I saw, well, at first, I didn't know it was the tea. I asked her what it, this was because it had like these little white on the back. It had this white fluffy stuff. And she said it was tea, so then I picked some for my mom. And then she told me like, when you get home, just leave it in a strainer and put it somewhere high so your brother doesn't get it and let it dry for a couple of days or like a month. And then you can jar it and then you can put in your tea. We also found lots of blueberries and we ate them. Some people might think, oh, it doesn't really matter to learn about your ancestors. But what I think is it matters because like how they live, they don't they didn't live like us. They live different. They had to hike up all the way to the mountain just to get tea. They did that for fun sometimes too. They had to venture out in the woods to go get medicines and stuff like that. That's I thought that was really cool, but like now here we could just go to the store to get medicine. But it's not the medicine that our ancestors used. It's kind of like toxic medicine. Like they just put stuff together and boom, they made medicine. But how our ancestors did it, they used different plants. They put it on their scars. And that's what healed them. They ate it, they put it in their tea. And they first, they're probably like, oh, I don't know what this plant's gonna do. Let's just try it out. They didn't. They didn't use it on any animals. Probably if they did get hurt by the medicine, they would know that not to use that anymore. And they would probably have another medicine that could heal them from that medicine. Important thing we're finding in our work in consultation is, is we want to share this information back with our members so that they have a better grasp and a better understanding and a better appreciation of, of our presence throughout our territory and on this land and, and what it means to be connected by ceremony and language. In our language, there are relations. When you say all my relations, it's not just your human kin, but it's your birds and your insects and your trees and your plants. So this is the kind of story that we're trying to revitalize for our youth. It was an awesome opportunity, you know, getting top of the mountain, you know what I mean? And everybody's exerted a bit of energy, so they're a little more receptive to being told stories. We gathered everybody at the top of the mountain, and I did a little historical piece explaining the mountain and importance to us as Wustgawiak, and specifically for Nagutko, people from Tobik, because we're named after this river and the headwaters of the river are right at the base of Mount Carlton. I appreciate everybody's really good effort getting up this mountain really fast. Coming and waking up really early, not being upset at all the delays. 
wrong turns. <laughs> but we made it, made it up the mountain quick. The thing that brings us all together is we have a connection to Tobik. I know all of your parents, you know, sometimes your grandparents and your uncles and your aunts, and we're all part of this community. Tobik, this is an important place for people who are from Tobik. This is where our story sort of starts. It was really hard to climb up the rocks because the rocks were really wobbly and that was scary. And I stepped on one of the rocks and it like dipped in and there was like a hole that my foot slid in and it was really scary. We were like the last group to come up and we went up the hard way and we kind of got a little lost too. We got to the top and we were looking all over for you guys. We were saying you guys' names and then we, heard, we saw you guys wave and we were like, ugh, we climbed the wrong mountain. And then we climbed like five other ones. We went down and then we ended up and then down and then up. And what we did is because we went the hard way, we grabbed one of the rocks and put it in our bag. We're like, this is a memory. And then once we finally got to you guys, you guys were like, okay, let's go. Mm. But we stayed for a little longer. Well, it was really, it was a nice view where you could see all the other little hills, mountains and trees and stuff. And I just felt like I wanted to stay up there forever and look at the view. It meant getting like a good gasp of air. It was really nice. When you're outside, you tend to get a better response from people. They're more engaged, especially if you're talking about the land. We noticed a change and we feel that this is a viable sort of method going forward for sharing our history and our story. The wisdom and the intelligence that was put in those trees, as long as the sun will shine, as the grass will go and the rivers will flow. Like think of how they were thinking about time. They didn't put any limitations. Who's thinking 10,000 years in the future? Not many people are making contracts like that. We did. We have to make it better for the generations that are coming. Our decisions cannot make it worse for them. Climate change is going to be a huge global issue, bigger than COVID, bigger than any of the things we faced in the past. I hope climate change isn't, climate change isn't a big deal anymore. Because me and my sisters were talking, and there were, we were talking, we were like just calculating stuff, and we were saying, well, if climate change were to destroy the world in like this many years, then I would be like 42, and that's, I don't want to die when I'm 42. We have to change how things are done here, and storytelling will be a way that we're inspiring our youth so that they, they will be the change makers. So I encourage all you guys, just make little things, go out on the land, put some music to it, and, and we can build a movement. So be responsive to your elders, listen to your elders, and then, like I say, use your platforms and the media is available now to tell a story. Make your networks big with other communities. See what's going on in other communities, things that are inspiring you. See how it works in yours. We're changing how this planet is going to be treated, I think, going forward. And, and I believe a big push is going to come from us as this, you know, indigenous of this land. So I wish you well on your journeys, you know what I mean? That's somebody like a drawing to sit on. <laughs> but... Sometimes you just need to put your phone away and go on a walk. Enjoy the nature, listen to the birds, listen to the trees. It's not boring, it's fun. And if you're ever in a hard place, you just go outside, sit down somewhere, take some healing time. That's some good advice. I'm also good for my mama. You're a smart cookie. I'd say as a mom, I'm thankful that she's had the opportunities to go hiking and then to have this opportunity to be um, interviewed. I think it it's not something you get to do every day and not every kid gets to do it. So I'm pretty grateful she's had the opportunity to do it. You don't need to be cool. You're cool. Cool is your cool, not what other people think is cool. Should we close our eyes and listen? Yeah. What can you hear? Can you hear any birds? I hear a bird over there. Me too. If you're, if you're outside and it's quiet, you should just listen to the sound around you. Write, write it down. Go outside and write down what you hear. Something like that.